Hey guys, Tony here coming to you live from my garage. So I'm not uh, not a big video guy, but I figured um, this video is probably worth making. So I'm going to attempt to go through and show you guys um, the infamous IMS bearing replacement on a Porsche Boxster 996. So um, I have done this once before um, a couple years ago on a, on a different car, and I had actually kind of forgotten everything that I had uh, I had had done last time. So I thought it would be worth documenting uh, what I did uh, and the process for everybody else. Um, I did go through, so you guys are probably familiar with Pelican parts. I um, actually bought the replacement, um, it's their $189 uh, replacement IMS uh, bearing kit. It's not the Ellen Engineering, it's the, the cheap one. But um, I used that last time and it worked really well. And I thought I would do that again. So um, again, just wanted to show you guys what what it takes. So I um, I've got give me some background here. I bought a uh, 2001 Boxster S that had a uh, uh, bad motor in it, and I actually ordered a new motor, um, a scrap motor out of a, a wrecked 2001. So it's just a it's just pulling the motor out, putting the other one back in. But before I put the other one, the new one back in, I wanted to go through and you know do some basic things to it: water pump, thermostat. IMS bearing, um, that kind of stuff. So I'm at the IMS bearing section right now, and I guess um, I'll show you what I'm what I'm doing, and I'll try and make this as as short as possible and get you all the information that you need. Um, not real for sure how to how to set this up, but I've got got the engine kind of hanging here uh, with the jack under it. You can see. The infamous IMS. Now, I will tell you that I've already, I've already started the process just to just to kind of refresh myself. Um, but I want to show you what I did. So, the IMS has three 10 millimeter uh, uh, bolts holding it in. It has a 13 millimeter nut that that's on the shaft, um, and this shaft is pressed into the back of the brain. Let me grab the other one. I'll show you at the same time. So this is what's inside there, right? So you have the bearing that sits actually, the bearing gets pressed into the uh, intermediate shaft. The intermediate shaft is a hollow shaft. The bearing gets pressed into that, and then the stud is pressed into the center race of the bearing, and it comes out through this, uh, you know, this removable mounting flange, I guess you would say, or the removable mounting piece. And then that bolt gets bolted um, through this, and that holds uh, that holds the intermediate shaft in in place, okay, on this end of it anyway. So um, there's on Pelican Parts site. There's a couple different uh, descriptive ways of removing this. Uh, one is to lock the camshafts in place, um, put the motor top dead center, lock everything in place. Then you have to worry about um, the change, uh, change, the five chain engine. Uh, this is a 2001, by the way, 2001 Boxster S. So it's a 3.2 liter five chain engine. So you're worried about the chains um, slipping. Now I tell you, I've had, I've had these things apart. Uh, I've had the heads off them before. Um, I understand the timing process. Uh, I've done all that uh, multiple times in the past. Uh, not worried about I wouldn't be worried about doing that um, but I don't want to <laughs> so I wanted to try the process where they use the little set screws I don't know these actually come with uh, the Pelican parts kit and they're three little uh, set screws and the idea is that you remove the um, the three bolts that hold this cap in place and before you remove this, because as soon as you pop this out, that's what that's what actually holds the intermediate shaft in place. Uh, this this cap does. There's a there's a little um, uh, portion that slides inside um, inside the end of this bearing, this hollow area right there. It actually slides in there. So when you remove this cap, then the whole bearing uh, and the IMS will get pulled to one side. 
uh, because the chain tensioners um, are pulling it in, in <laughs> three different directions. So what I wanted to do was try and use their um, uh, set screws so that I wouldn't have to mess with any of the chains. And I'll show you what I'll show you what to do because I did it I did it wrong the first time. Um, and I want to see if I can set this somewhere where you can see so I can actually use my hands. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this chair behind the scenes over here. Set this up and see if we can see it still. Sorry for the shaky camera, but like I said, the video is not my forte, but I figured this was worth, worth it. Alright, so can you see that? I think you can see it. I'm still kind of blind. Okay. So, if you just remove the three 10 millimeter bolts, before you remove the cap, so Allen wrench, before you move this at all, you take, okay, so forgot this part too. You do have to align the intermediate shaft because there's um, um, a cog on the back of it you have to make sure it's aligned otherwise these bolt these these set screws are just going to go into the engine and, and fall off and you're and you're no pun intended but screwed. So what I did was I pulled out all three bolts and I just used a little pick and I went in there and you can kind of measure and see how far it is. And that should be the same on all three. Now, I'll tell you that I've already put these set screws in the other two, so those are already in place. So what I did do was I did um, rotate the engine uh, on the front, I think it's a 24 millimeter nut on the, uh, <coughs> um, you know, on, on the front of the engine, you can rotate it. And I did put a uh, um, pin in to hold it in place at top dead center. And um, I found that all three of these were, were lined up. So I didn't have to worry about the screw going in too far. If it's not, if it's not lined, I guess if it's not lined up, you know, it's in the valley or the trough of, of one of the cogs, you can just push this all the way through and it'll, it'll go all the way in. So um, if it stops on all three, you know you've got a good surface for these guys to line up to. So um, screw this in. And... You want to get them fairly snug. Um, what I did, or what I found, held them in place is using the Allen wrench in this configuration. Um, I got it as tight as I could by hand, and that was enough to hold the intermediate shaft. So, nice and tight. Double check these. Yep. Yep. Okay. So that was enough to hold it in place. Now. Um, I don't have the tool for removing uh, this guy. There's a um, Porsche tool for removing it. Um, I found that a couple little pry bars in the right spot and a hammer. And the, the nice, th nice thing is that the mating, mating surfaces here uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I won't get it. I guess fortunately, are not are not where I said I had this removed before. But so you just kind of got to go around this thing and pop it out. There's no sexy way to do it. But I guess the point I was trying to make is there's no ah there we go. If you rotate it a little bit, it gives you a lot more. Oh, you know what? You guys are probably looking at me like I'm an idiot. Um, you do need to take off the 13 millimeter nut. I forgot that I had that on there. All right, so you remove the 13 millimeter nut. And a lot of times, because it is on a bearing, the center shaft will spin, and that's where you have to take a flat blade, hold the stud, and then rotate the nut. Um, this guy is pretty, will spin pretty loosely. Okay, so, 
that off. You know what, that might make the prying a little bit easier. All right, so like I said, you, you go around this thing and you can get a, pry, a small pry bar, clap plate in underneath there and get this thing to come out. Um, equal pressure on it works well. Uh, the thing that's worth noting is that this, this top mating surface um, has been marred up by me. But it doesn't matter because that's not a, that's not a mating surface for a gasket or anything. Uh, the mating surface that you have to be concerned about is the inside, uh, inside lip of this. So you can put a screwdriver underneath there oh, and pry it off. Okay, so here's, here's the cap. And as you can see, this part here is what, well, I was going to show you on the new bearing, but this, no, it's on. let me take this off real quick. So, this slides into here and fits down inside there. So that's what supports the bearing and the intermediate shaft which slides over this. So this is holding that whole end on place and you put the nut on top of there and that just keeps it all in place. Okay, so when the intermediate shaft spins, the bearing spins and that's what, that's what you have going on. So when this bearing fails, the, um, uh, the intermediate shaft is no longer held in place in this orientation and you have, uh, you have the potential for, because there's a cog on there where the chain goes around, you have the potential for that chain to get uh, um, off. So that's the new one. I'm just showing you there how it slides, how it slides together. Hopefully you can see that real well. Okay, so uh, with this guy off, um, we look in here and we can see, uh, you can see the intermediate shaft, the bearing that's in there is held in place in the center. Okay, so these three Allen bolts that are that are in here are pushing on it. You may be even able to see it. My camera doesn't bend the light, which it kind of does. Maybe you can see it from this side. Um, you can see right in there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's the bolt that goes through, and it's pushing on. Uh, it's pushing on the cog of the um, intermediate shaft, and that's what those three of them are holding them in place. Okay, so now the idea is to get the bearing out. So everybody has a uh, fancy IMS uh, bearing puller, right? And I've seen a couple different homemade ones, and I kind of have my own version that I think works well that I really like. Um, so this stud in the center um, can be tapped out. Uh, it's just pushed. It's just pressed into that bearing. So what I do is instead of Instead of coming up with something to attach to the stud here and then pull it out that way, what I've done, I've seen this done before and I've done it myself, is I just tap out the uh, tap out the stud so that the intermediate shaft is hollow. And uh, aside from oil being in there, uh, leaking in, to, in through there, there's really nothing in there. So if you just tap this out, goes in there. Now, what you can also do is if you're scared, you can take a little magnet okay, oh, and cap up pulling oil out. But you can see we still have it. So it's still right there. We're just gonna leave it in there. Push it back in with my finger just so it's not in very far. It's out of the way. Okay, so that stud is in there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the bench and show you my puller that I came up with. Oh, um, what I also forgot to tell you that you're probably noticing is that there was a C-clip in here. And like I said, I'd already had this apart and I already took the C-clip out, so I wasn't gonna, wasn't gonna show you that again. But you do need to pull this C-clip out. That's what holds the bearing in. And this is a single row bearing. So you pull that C-clip out. Um, it's important, I've seen people put your, put your finger in the side when you're pulling this out, just to prevent it from falling down because it can totally fall right down between the intermediate shaft and the uh, engine case so you want to prevent that from happening so when you're using your when you're using your c-clip pliers um, put a finger in there too just to keep it from uh, keep it from falling down because you do not want to lose that in the in the engine case but that comes out um, just like a normal c-clip so let me show you let me show you over here what I'm doing with the puller set this up 
and show you what I've got going on. So, um, this guy right here, if you can see that, it's a AutoZone. We have AutoZones. I'm in St. Louis, Missouri, 27059. Uh, it is a part that they rent. It's 15 bucks. Um, to rent it if you don't return it. It's 15 bucks. So it's pretty it's a pretty cheap puller that works really well, so What I found is that this little guy you basically Slide this into the bearing into the uh, in inside part of the bearing and then as you tighten it down It widens and it will grab the bearing and then you can pull it pull it out So there's a couple different ways to do it. They um AutoZone suggested I use a slide hammer, and they rented me a slide hammer, but I don't like the idea of that, especially with those um, uh, Allen set screws in the case. I don't like that pounding on there. So what I came up with was a different setup. Now I have a, uh, um, it's a Harbor Freight bearing puller set. Okay, so it's got all the different uh, size flanges and, and, and stuff. And there's a couple pieces in there that I robbed from, and one is the uh, is the bolt and the nut, and now this guy happens to be the right thread pattern to screw into the back of this guy, which is convenient. So what I have done is I've come up with uh, a few pieces here. This is my official um, IMS removal tool. This is a two inch piece of PVC. Uh, it's just a T. Um, I found this actually fits into the inside of the IMS uh, compartment and it'll fit, sit on the actual IMS itself on the shaft and then the bearing will slide between there. So what I'm doing is I'm putting this on and I'll, I'll, we'll do this here in a second. I have not I have not gone so far as to pull the bearing out so we'll, we'll do it and make sure it works. Um, slide this in, you open it up, okay right, and then um, <clears throat> I actually got this piece is just a it's just a flat that'll go over here okay. and I will thread this onto here I'll have this onto here and then I'll be able to tighten this down and pull the bearing straight out okay so that's that's the plan so let's go see if we can put this thing together and uh, get it to work okay back at the motor like I said, this guy fits right into there. I'll be held in place uh, nicely, okay? Um, yeah, so that, that kind of fits right in there. The puller, we will slide into the bearing and then open that up as tight as we can get it. So we've got a good, you know, that spins on the, uh, the bearing. Oh, and by the way, the bearing that was in here was in good shape. There is, there is definitely nothing wrong with it. It's a 77,000 mile motor. The car's got 80,000 on it. The motor I got from a junkyard was 77,000. Um, so I figured it'd be a good idea to do the IMS. But um, anyway, so I've got that opened up in there. And I guess the next thing, I probably should have put this on. So I'm gonna pause this while I assemble this part. Okay, don't laugh, but there's probably multiple different ways to configure this, but I want to show you what I ended up doing. So, like I said, I have the puller inside the bearing, okay, so my PVC pipe square there is, or the, the uh, cross, is not quite long enough, so I'm not for sure what I did last time. Um, I probably could have just added an extension of PVC to inch pipe, but I don't have any readily available here without cutting it. And you know, I just thought this is going to be a lot easier. Actually, this is part of that puller kit. It's just a, a tube, uh, so I put that over, and that takes up enough extra in here. So I've made this little uh, piece with parts. This is the uh, the nut that'll that'll screw in, so I can pull this out couple washers so that it spins just a, a flat to push against it so um, what I do like about the T that I remembered is that when I go to when I go to tighten this in that puller is going to spin in the bearing so I can actually stick my finger in here 
and hold the puller from spinning while I get this threaded in. So, get it squared away, started. All right. I actually want to make sure I have enough, enough threads on. I want to get that threaded in really good and tight so there's no issue with the, uh, with the puller. I can line everything back up. Okay, so got quite a few threads on the on the puller now. So now I can start backing this off. And I can also make sure that the puller is spinning as opposed to just tightening it. Keep everything square there because you want this to pull out squarely. Okay. So you can kind of see everything's lined up. So at this point we just tighten this guy down and hope and this comes out as it should. And that sounds like it loosened up. some point this whole thing bearing it all should just fall off and at the end of it we have the IMS there it is and then let's not forget our little screw shaft is still in here so that came right out. So that is the IMS removal with some pretty basic, pretty basic parts. All right. So that's what's. Uh, my light's kind of in the way, but that's what you get um, when it's all done. And you notice the uh, IMS is still centered. So that's just the, uh, the hollow shaft, and that's where. That's where the bearing rides, right in there. So, and the set screws are still holding it in place. So nothing's moving around in there, and there's no fear for the timing to be off um, because we're really, we're not moving anything. This this whole thing is staying uh, staying in place. So um, I'm gonna turn this off, and then I'll make another video on how to put it uh, put it back in. Okay, I did I did think it was worth showing you guys this. This is a. Uh, on the bench, the more I think, the more we see how this thing works and goes together, the more, better understanding we'll have of, of what what we're dealing with here and why it's uh, why or how it comes apart and goes together and all that good stuff. So, um, you guys saw the the puller that I that I made. Um, so, you know, it's it's pretty it's pretty robust and straightforward. It's just made with kind of standard parts out of a uh, bearing puller kit, um, Harbor Freight bearing puller kit, but you can use probably any, 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 any bolts that would fit. So when this, when this comes apart, you have the, uh, the bearing puller. This is the heart of the kit really. And this is what, what's happening, right? Remember we knocked the, uh, we knocked the centerpiece out, uh, which there's an O-ring and it, it's just pressed in there. We knocked that out and then we had something to grab onto to pull this bearing to slide it out of the intermediate shaft. So um, I'm gonna loosen this up, take it out. Um, it's probably worth noting, I was gonna show you this while it's together and I can do this again real quick because this is an easier way to do it, but um, when this is in here, so that bearing spins very smooth. Um, bearing spins very smooth. There's no, there's no play in it. Again, you can take it out to see that too, but um, the bearing itself spins 
spins very smooth, there's no issues. Um, the caps covers are still in place. There's no there's no issues at all with this guy. Um, and this was pressed into the back. That's how this thing goes. Now, it's also worth worth noting and showing you guys that the um, the replacement that oops, for the replacement that comes with the Pelican parts kit um, uses a larger diameter uh, screw. Okay, the bearings look the same. Uh, NSK versus NSK. So the uh, NSK Poland. Um, I can't read the part number because I'm old and going blind. 6204DU17. This is NSK Japan 6204V. So they're similar but different. Poland versus Japan. Um, yeah, I can't tell, you know, anything else other than that. So, um, they, I think they recommend every 40,000 miles replace this guy. Um, once, once you get it done, it's, it's really not that big a deal, though, to get it out. Like the transmission, um, you can get the transmission out in these cars, and, and I've honestly done it in an hour. It's, it's a pretty quick job. Once it's jacked up, it's pretty easy to get out. So, um... To get to these things aren't that big of a deal. Um, the transmission is heavy. It's a two-person job to get it down, or one person struggling. Um, but again, here's the new bearing, and here's the cap that'll go into it. So this will just slide right into there, and as you can see, that recessed section that just sits right in there. The new screw goes on, and then this obviously is pressed into the IMS. I think I'm holding that. Okay, you see that? And that's pressed into the IMS, the shaft itself, and then you have a nice, nice spinning surface for the IMS. Okay? So that's pretty much it. So I'm going to show you how to put this back in next. But I did want to show you on the bench here what we're dealing with. I wanted to show you that um, this guy still spins really smooth. Um, there's no play in it. This is a 77,000 mile car and this has never been replaced uh, before. This is still the original IMS. Um, and I could tell that just because you could tell that cap had never, this cap had never been off. Um, you know, everything looked, uh, looked original and still in place. So anyway, uh, I've gone through the puller, gone through uh, how to get it out, all pretty straightforward. Um, the, uh, the kit that comes with, the, the IMS kit that comes with uh, from Pelican Parts, I get this out here to show you. Um, it has a ton of a ton of parts in it. It has a new seal uh, for the uh, for the cover, um, the nut for the end. You have new uh, new bolts with sealant on them. Um, you have a single roll and a dual roll kit. Um, so depending on which one you have, obviously we have the single roll, so it's a new uh, C clip, and then um, a spacer. So. That's pretty much it. So we're going to start uh, start working on putting this guy back together. Alright, I want to show you one more thing. Uh, with the Pelican Parts IMS Retro Kit, I found something. Uh, I'd seen this on the forums or on the in the, in the question and answer section, but something I noticed that I wanted to point out, probably more for anybody doing this or even for Pelican Parts can change it. Um, about so when I was assembling this I was just kind of trying to put it all together to make sure I understood how how this goes together before I, I do it in the car so on the shaft itself if you can see there's there's quite a bit of area there where there's no threads to it so in the in the package for the single row with the S marked on it there was the circlip which um, we know where that goes that goes in after you put the bearing in the intermediate shaft then there was this little uh, washer guy. So I put that on there and then the um, o-ring goes over it and the screw goes on and when it's all the way seated, or the nut goes on, and when it's all the way seated you still have play. Well I guess not right. What's going on here? 
So I remember thinking somebody said that they had the wrong parts in the single row versus dual row. So I um, opened up the dual row package, marked with a D, and you have all these all these parts in it, and there's a much thicker spacer. Slide that on, then we slide the O-ring on, then we put the nut on. And voila, we have a nice perfect fit with no play. So, um, dear Pelican Parts, whoever you have bagging these things, they're putting the dual row part, uh, the single row part in the dual row part bag. So that's that's what we need to use. We need to use the, um, the nut, we need to use the O-ring, and then the larger, deeper spacer uh, for the um, single row as opposed to the thin one that was in the bag. Okay. All right, so we're going to dig back into the IMS replacement, and um, I guess at, at this point, um, it's ready to go back in. I've done a couple things. I cleaned everything up, so I uh, also got all the oil out of the intermediate shaft. There was a, since it's a hollow shaft, and there's not supposed to be any way for oil to get in there, but... Uh, it obviously seeps through the bearing. So I just uh, actually rolled up some paper towels, um, stuck it in there. I've got a little, my magnetic uh, tool, I put a hook on the other end. And I was able to get in there and get all the oil cleaned out. There was actually quite a bit of oil in there. So that's that's all cleaned out. I got all the, uh, the mating surfaces uh, where the bearing's going to go cleaned up. Um, everything looks pretty clean and good to go. So at this point, I have the um, I have the bearing itself, the new bearing, in the freezer in my beer fridge, uh, right behind me. So it's been in there for a little while. I'm gonna go grab that guy, and we're gonna get ready to throw it in. So um, the idea behind putting it in the freezer is that it will um, <coughs> shrink up just a little bit and make it easier to slide in. So um, I have what I do have is a couple sockets. Uh, I have a 32 uh, millimeter socket which fits uh, nicely inside there. There's a little bit of extra room but it fits nicely inside there. I have a 36 um, that's a little bit too big. Won't fit in there. It doesn't need to go into there because that's what I want it to do is sit on the outside race of the bearing uh, and that does fit very nicely um, but it's a shallow socket so it might be better to use the 32. Maybe if I had a 34 deep, it'd be perfect, but um, but this will work. And let me go get the bearing real quick, and we'll just try and see how it goes. So here's the new Pelican Parts bearing, and we're going to just sit it. I say it was all clean, but then I saw something. Let's put it in there because it's really critical that you push this thing in straight. And then, put this right over the top of it. Good news is it's going. And you have to go in until you can see the groove for the snap ring. All the way around. And I can see it. I want to make sure that that guy is in there all the way. Ouch. I'm getting the BFH. Do the last kind of uh, last few hits. You guys all know what BFH is, right? Big freaking hammer. And that looks like it is in 
all the way. All right, awesome. So now we add the snap ring back in there. We'll just grab that. And the new snap ring. And this is just like um, the opposite of taking it out, where you don't want to drop it down into the engine. If you do, you're going to hate life for a while. So, we put it on there, squeeze it together. I hate these things. If you've ever had one fly off on you, you know why. I don't know why, but um, that is together. I'm going to put my finger in there, and then we're going to see if we can't get it, get it seated. <laughs> and that was, uh, that was way too easy. So now the bearing is in there. It's held in place by the snap ring. And we are ready to put the cat back on. Okay, so I've got all the parts here. So now we're ready to put this guy back on. And I will tell you that these are not, it's not a, it's not a uh, perfect triangle. There's actually uh, more space between these two and these two than these two. So the smaller ones go there. Oh, and uh, it's worth noting I did put the new seal, uh, the new seal around the outside here. So hopefully that won't leak. Okay, now, and this guy, and this is where you can see that it's off a little bit. So it does look like the intermediate shaft maybe moved up a little bit, up, up this way. Um, that may have been from beating on it, that may have been because the bolts weren't tight enough, but you can see that this is off just a smidge. So I'm going to... See what happens if we start tapping. There we go. And that is just guiding it in place. I'm trying to keep the holes somewhat lined up here. This is actually big enough to hit. Now it's in there. It's twisted just a little bit, so I'm gonna try and rotate it just so I can get those Allen bolts out. Because the Allen bolts are still in there. So let's see if these are willing to come out. And it looks like this one is, and you would think that if this one did, the rest of them would. There's one. get these out, we can replace two, and three. So the new kit comes with new bolts, and we will replace those and torque them down appropriately. So, let me grab those real quick. So you have the three new 10 millimeter bolts that will go in. And if this thing's lined up, this thing will just go right in, no issue. Oops. And that 
that pulls them all the way in. I'm not going to, we'll torque them down in a minute, but now I want to put the last part of this on to show you. This is the spacer. Goes over. The O ring goes over that. And then the nut that goes over that. So, again, since this is on the inner part of the bearing, that can spin. So you can use a 13, whoops, actually that one's not a 13, is it? Smaller. So, to figure out what that is, we're probably a 12 or a little smaller. Uh, but you can use a flat blade to hold this. Use a flat blade to hold this and then tighten it down. So you get that tight, and then we'll torque these down, and that's the uh, that's the whole project. So um, it's really not that that difficult. There's a few a few things, but um, again, using those those three set screws, the intermediate shaft doesn't move or shouldn't move um, enough to have any of the chains um, be loose enough to skip a tooth to cause the motor to be out of, uh, out of timing. So um, you don't have to loosen the um, chain tensioners um, to do this. You just have to remove the screws uh, that hold the cover in, put the set screws in place, and that keeps everything from moving. Um, again, I did, I did put a um, locking pin um, in the front of the motor. I'll show you that. Um, on the front of the motor for top dead center. That's this guy, uh, came in the uh, Porsche toolkit. But I did find that, uh, and actually we can, we can pull, pull this guy out um, and you'll see, but there's a little notch here that gives you top dead center to lines with this. And then this slides in. Um, I did find, I know people have used bolts in the past. Um, there's a certain uh, um, drill bit that uh, fits right in there as well. Um, but that keeps it from moving. So I did lock it in. Once I, once I got uh, it aligned to top dead center, um, I was able to get the, uh, um, remember when I used the little pick to make sure that there was um, space behind there. Um, so I did, actually did see a picture. It's not the, it's not the trough of the uh, teeth um, around the outside of the cog. It's actually, it's actually inside of that um, diameter a little bit. There's um, the shaft has holes in it, or that that cog itself has holes in it, and you have to align it so you you're not going through a hole. You're actually going into a, a solid piece of piece of the shaft or piece of the um, sprocket, I guess you would call it. So um, that's what you're trying to align. So once you get that aligned, you can lock the, the motor in place, um, and then you've got a good a good place to um, you know you're in a good you're in a good spot to uh, put the set screws in. Okay. So that's, uh, that is the IMS bearing replacement. Again, this was a 2001 Boxster S, the 3.2 liter. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. There you go. Hope it helps.